Welcome back. Now it's time for us to answer questions you have asked us. So let's get started with Dr. Shabir Ali. Uh, so question one is from Vice. Uh, what happens if you pray istikhara and the answer is no, but you still follow through with your own decision? Will you go to hell or is it permissible to go against the answer from istikhara? Mm -hmm. Well, it, the, the question is based on the uh, premise that uh, you, you pray the istikhara, which is a prayer asking God for his guidance in a particular affair. And, and then you get a clear answer, yes or no. But that, that premise is wrong, that you get a clear answer, yes or no. It's not an answer that you get. To, it's more that you're asking God in, in the, to, to guide you in the background in a hidden way, but, but to make things happen so that uh, the best outcome is achieved in whatever you're endeavoring uh, into. Uh, it, it may be that uh, some, you know, maybe somebody sees a dream and in that dream it becomes clear to them that they shouldn't apply for this job or shouldn't take the job offer uh, or they shouldn't venture into this new uh, enterprise or whatever um, or just a strong inclination that arises in their, in their minds. Um, but it doesn't have to be uh, something that is internal. It could be some external things. God is uh, manipulating the, the external affairs to bring about the good that is there for you, whether in this thing or in something else. So basically the prayer says, oh God, if this thing is good for me, for my life here and the life hereafter, then bring it to me and uh, make me satisfied with it. And if it is not good for me, then turn it away from me and turn me to that which is actually good for me and make me happy with that. So you, you see the prayer itself is not really asking God, is this right? Tell me mm -hmm. yes or no. It's not the yes or no answer. It is God um, bringing about the affair. So uh, the, the answer is no. You, you can't really know that it is a yes or no um, answer. Uh, so there's no question of going against the answer because the answer won't be so uh, clear. And you make but the decision and then you do the You make the prayer, decision, right? you do all of your background checks, you do your due diligence and then you proceed in the best manner possible uh, asking this du'a in, in the background. So there's no sense of asking for forgiveness because there's nothing wrong. If you thought clearly one day, I must do this, and then the next day you thought, no, I shouldn't be doing this. Well, you, you follow the last thought because you, you have to act on, on the best information that you have and the more developed thinking that you have achieved after th pondering the issue and analyzing the various aspects. Perfect. Um, Kim Kareen is asking, what is the verse what your right hand possess mean? Well, this, this refers to, uh, according to the classical commentators, uh, the fact that people owned slaves uh, in ancient times. In the Quranic language, is what your right hands possess. Um, so, so that's what is meant by that Quranic statement, according to the classical commentators. Perfect. Uh, Ramesh Iqbal is asking, how can one gain certainty in faith, and where do we start from? One cannot gain absolute certainty in faith. Uh, faith, by its very definition, involves a kind of, uh, as people say, a leap of faith. It uh, uh, repeats the word faith here, so it's not quite a definition. Uh, but uh, the, the idea is there that faith involves some kind of trust. Uh, in, in Arabic, the word iman is explained by the classical Quranic commentator at Tabari as involving trust. Uh, so. A, you, you trust in God, though you don't see Him. You trust in His promises, though it's, you have to wait to see it fulfilled. And um, uh, you cannot achieve absolute certainty, but of course, uh, certainty, is an I certainty is an ideal uh, towards which we work. So we try to do the best we can to remove doubts, to um, strengthen our faith, and to become very closely uh, aligned with, with God and with His plan for our lives. So how do we uh, get this um, mm -hmm. more polished uh, appearance to our faith? How do we increase and strengthen the faith? How do we achieve that kind of certainty? So that's back to the question. Uh, we uh, do that by reading books that will explain the faith better, to, uh, to explain to us the hikmah, the wisdom behind things, uh, to help us to be intellectually satisfied, to remove doubts and misgivings, uh, or problems that people might find with faith, how to be answered to the problems and objections. Uh, so we need to uh, read up on that, study, think. We need to read the Quran because that brings us closer to God. We need to be immersed in our prayers with proper and due attention because that will help us to be close to God in, in, in close remembrance and attachment. And all of this means the strengthening of our faith and the achievement of certainty. Perfect. Thank you very much, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. 
Hey YouTube, we hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.